Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So uh, let's talk about the market, right? Before we do though, I, I actually, I, I, I first wanted to kind of reverse engineer this, but I, I, I kind of want to make my point here. So there's something that I tell uh, traders all the time. When the trend is up, okay, don't overthink. Don't try to get cute. And what I mean by that is everybody tries to get cute trying to find that one reversal when the market's collapsing the, you know the traders out there a lot of new traders out there they try to get that one strong stock that's completely going the opposite of the market so i always tell traders look it's all about the whole right it's all about the macro picture it's not about an individual event in a whole macro universe so go with that direction and today was a perfect example how i had a perfect game plan going into today perfect we had the perfect levels like perfect, like perfect. We talked about yesterday on the video, uh, 192.75, 193 for a push to the first 195s. That was perfect. I said, hey, look, man, I really like the bulls today. I think there's gonna be value to the long side. Everything's gonna be perfect. But the problem is, okay, we are unfortunately schmucks, right? I'm the king of the idiots. And sometimes the king of the idiots will completely deviate from his game plan uh, to try to be cute, right? To try to be cute and try to find that trade that is defying the trend or defying the range and try to get it back the other way. And today was a perfect example was I was right on everything, right? Right on everything. And the day almost turned out to be absolutely ri ridiculously bad for me. Uh, just to give you an idea how things went for me in the morning. In the first 15 minutes of the day, okay, um, two out of my three trades, I went in my, in my direction very, very quickly only to lose money on my, literally on my first three trades of the day. Okay. I gave back yesterday's day in the first 15 minutes. Okay. And if it wasn't for a little stock called Tesla, okay. And another scalp on the video, I would have had a really crappy day. Instead, Tesla, thank you very much. Elon Musk completely bailed me out today and got me to pretty much even on the day. Um, that was the blessing. Okay. That was the blessing, but here's the point, right? Here's the point. Well, and we'll talk about all the individual, individual pivots in a second, but here's the point. Okay. If you have a plan, wait for that plan to play out. Okay. Give whatever directional bias you have of the market. Okay. Whether like today, for example, I came in long bias. So, okay. We talked about these levels on the cues. So if you're long bias, okay, let the market tell you you're wrong. Okay, do not deviate from your game plan because if you do deviate from your game plan, what you're gonna be doing is trading number one, trading stocks that you're not gonna be usually trading. Okay, you're gonna find yourself, for example, I was trading Abbott, Abbott today. Okay, I was trading ABT today. What in the name of God am I doing trading ABT today? When you have Amazon taking out pivot, when you have uh, Nvidia taking out a pivot, when you have Netflix taking out a pivot, when you have you know a Roku taking out a pivot, what the hell am I doing with Abbott, right? So you kind of get the point. So if you're trading beta, like again, I trade beta, 99% of my trades, 95% of my trades are beta. Let beta tell you that your stocks are out of favor for today, okay? Don't assume because you're seeing some stocks that are setting up on the cute side, right? Setting up for a move that potentially could come later. And again, you and we all know in the back of our minds, there was nothing I could have possibly done with a trade on Abbott that could have, I could have accomplished on Netflix, on uh, Alibaba, on, for example, on uh, Zoom. Well, Zoom, Zoom got me today. After I got it, it got me. So the moral of the story, guys, no matter what type of trader you are, stick to what you know, okay? Stick to your lane. Don't deviate from, you know, from what your, your comfort zone is, because usually what's going to happen is you're never going to get the results you want. You're always going to play behind. And eventually when your results are going to be so subpar or so lackluster, you're going to have to be put in a choice and your choice is going to be either chase the market, right? Chase the market and chase second and third tier setups, 
or kind of sit on the sidelines. Luckily for me, I got very lucky today that Tesla got strong. And by the way, Tesla was my number one short idea of the day. Just again, just to show you how crazy this market is. When I came in today, right? When I came in, I was looking at this bottom right here. We actually even talked about it yesterday. I said, the two names that I like on the short side tomorrow are Tesla and Zoom. Ironically, this is the one who saved me on the long side. And, and we traded it, per I mean, perfectly, perfectly right into the daily supply within a dollar of the high of the day. So if it wasn't for Tesla today, I would have had a really crappy day. But the most important part is, again, guys, no matter what happens, I don't care if God taps you on the shoulder and say, hey, deviate from your process. You say, God, listen, with all due respect, I'm going to stick in my lane. I got very, very fortunate enough today. Um, I did like kind of getting to the trading side of it. I did like what I saw for the most part of the day today, okay? We, we saw very, very aggressive moves uh, out of channels, okay? Uh, we saw today a slow grind, kind of every dip got bought. And what I continued to like before we kind of sold off towards the end of the day, I kind of did like that, again, for the, for the third day in a row, we put in a, a higher high, right? We put in a higher low. We're continuing this ride, this five-day moving average. We got above this channel, right? We went right back into the supply zone that we talked about that was a measured potential. And again, the losses for the market right now, right, for the overall general market is a lot smaller than the gain. So, for example, if you look at this candle compared to this candle, this candle is a lot bigger. This candle is a lot bigger than this candle for the measure potential because, again, are the overall net gains. So, again, for, for, the, for the point of structural balance, I do like the fact that the market is much is getting is getting much more lethargic. We're a long ways away from destroying volatility and kind of omitting it, but we're getting there little by little, st baby steps by baby steps. Again, I think uh, even even the Corona news came out out of Italy. I think they, I think this is either week one full week that they're starting to see a slowdown in cases. Don't, please don't quote me if you can double check that. But again, again we get we get so much information throughout the day. Sometimes it's very, very hard to remember what's what and what from what day. So I apologize if I'm wrong. But we did see that. And again, we, we need to see, uh, especially overnight in the futures markets, uh, less ranges. Like, again, we woke up this morning. Uh, the Dow futures were, were pretty flat. I mean, everything was pretty flat, up a little bit, down a little bit. But I like the fact that the market, at least in the morning, uh, defended levels, gave opportunities back to the upside. Uh, again, they obviously got rejected because of the supply zone here. But again, three days in a row, higher highs, higher lows. So tomorrow, going into tomorrow, um, I do have a mixed bag. Um, I like some longs. Um, I like some shorts. I, I continue. I, again, I still think the be the best hedge, if you believe, if you're a bear, okay, I believe that if you think this is going to be the end of the world, and again, I think you, you're crazy to think so. But again, I want to kind of highlight, you know, I, I kind of want to highlight uh, both sides of the market. We're an equal opportunist here. So if you believe that we are turning into another 2007-2008 uh, debacle and unemployment is going to be at 50%, I'm just using numbers, uh, really high on un unemployment, uh, business is going to close. Again, if, if you are Jim Chanos, uh, David Tice, the Grim Reaper, my mother-in-law and everybody in between, you think the end of the world is going to come, that I think the best hedges I really do are all these REITs, these these um, these commercial property uh, owners. If if you look, for example, like look at SPG, right? Look at SPG. They own tons of shopping malls. Again, these are great hedges against you know against any upside bias. Look at letter O, right? Look at letter O rolling over as well. Uh, PLD is another. Uh, PLD is, I think, the largest one uh, lar or largest of these commercial uh, commercial companies, commercial real estate companies. So, uh, again, these are pretty good plays. Uh, Kimco as well, right? Kimco as well, which I kind of like. This thing starts breaking down below $9. It will give us next leg down. But these are really pretty good uh, hedges against, uh, well, the overall demise uh, of the financial system, okay? Just to kind of uh, put it out there. I've been talking about them uh, kind of off and on. Uh, for the last uh, few weeks. So let's talk about the pivots, right? They look good on paper. You're a must follow, Dan. Sarcasm, right? So the game plan was there, man. It was there. It was there. As you can see, my number one idea today, uh, well, first of all, let's see. You know, first of all, we talked about want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Again, what we talked about a few minutes ago, initial value to the upside. Again, what we talked about a few minutes ago, Dan, don't deviate, Dan. Value days only, second entries, take cash flow. Avoid the afternoon trading. Well, I, 
I, I, I completely avoided the afternoon trading because I was actually sitting there after I got green on the, well, not green, I got flat on the day. Um, I actually just sat there. I actually just sat there waiting for a pivot in the afternoon that never came. But again, that is the value. So this was my number one idea of the day. 490, if it builds below, can flush. Obviously, that didn't happen, right? Obviously, it didn't happen. We'll talk about the upside pivot in a second. So I short ZM, right? I short ZM. Uh, I used the second entry. So I short ZM in the, the low 144s, right? It goes down like 70, 80 cents. Two seconds. Three seconds if it was, if it was, if that was that long, right? I didn't have a chance to even even react, like didn't even react. I, I thought there was going to be a move to at least that 142 area, 42 and a half. So I didn't have time to react. By the time I blinked, uh, I wound up losing about $1.50 in the trade. Yep, first trade of the day, all good. So I buy Facebook, right? I buy Facebook. Uh, excuse me, I forgot about a Abbott. So I'm watching Abbott, right? It takes out the low, rallies right back. So I, I short the second entry, right? That's what you're supposed to do. I'm shorting random stocks. Abbott, right? I wound up losing 65 cents. Okay, all good, right? So my first two trades, very uncharacteristic of me. But again, I'm doing my job. I'm using the right stops. Everything's all good, right? So here's where, here's where I, I got, like I, I kind of started thinking, you know what? This day is not for me. So 166.90, 167 was the second entry, okay? It was the second entry. It didn't do anything wrong, okay? So I buy Facebook, and you're going to turn around and say, wow, what a move on Facebook, right? $4 move on Facebook, okay? Here's the 67, right? Everybody see the 67? It only goes up like 40, 40 something cents, right? I had an offer out, okay, just to take some cash flow, because again, there's no guarantees anything's going to happen. I always take cash flow, and once I get filled on cash flow, then I'll always use break even as my stop. So I missed my sale, right? I missed my sale. It goes down. It goes back to uh, where I bought it. And it kind of sits there for like a, a minute, right? Kind of sits there for like a minute. And, you know, and then it goes down and I wound up losing about 50 cents on the trade, right? And then I watched it go down another dollar. And I was like, oh, okay. It's just not my day. And I was like, and I said to myself, when was the last time my first three trades of the day didn't work out? And especially my first two trades, excuse me, my first two out of three gave me cash flow, right? Just didn't give me the opportunity to take money off. So I was sitting there and I was sitting there, I go, all right, you know what? I'm not going to revenge trade. I'm not going to sit there and feel sorry for myself. It's part of the business. Um, you know, there's going to be days that you're going to get a move in your direction. You're just not going to be able to, you know, not going to be able to capitalize. So then I said to myself, look, I either can revenge trade, uh, do something stupid away from my channels. And again, this is why I say uh, that Tesla is the greatest, the absolute greatest. This Nvidia pivot. I uh, actually took the second entry. I scalped this. Uh, this was after the. This was after my first Tesla trade. But I scalped this Nvidia pivot. Again, while I was messing around with Abbott and ZM, right? I missed Roku 92 pivot, right? Missed Roku 92 pivot, right? This is what happens when you deviate. Missed the 92 pivot on Roku. Goes to almost 95. You get the point. Amazon again, Dan. Don't deviate from what you do. Watch the red to green. If it builds 75, it can go right. Da, 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 da. And Dan, don't de don't deviate. Don't deviate. The stock goes to 1994, right? 20 point move there. Dan, don't deviate what you're doing. And again, I'm trying to convince myself for tomorrow. That's not, not crazy. I'm trying to convince myself for tomorrow. This is how we learn, guys. This is how we learn. Uh, Netflix 73 needs to build again, Dan. Don't deviate, right? Don't deviate. Don't do it. Don't do it, right? It goes to 83, $10 move. You kind of get the point. This is when you know that again, execution and being completely focused is what you're going to do to be successful. Once you start deviating and try to get cute with all these stupid plays that again, the theme is completely the opposite of what you're looking to do that is going to hurt you. So this is what saved my life. And again, I, I say this till the day I die, Tesla is the best stock ever. It really is. It absolutely is. So I buy Tesla. There was two separate entries, but I knew that 526 was going to be a big spot. I knew it was going to be a big spot. Um, it breaks this 526. And the reason why 526 was a big spot, right? So if you look right here, let me show you. Uh, you see this candle right here, guys? The candle right here uh, from, the, from uh, the 27th, right? From four days ago. The high here was 525.80. So I knew if this thing was going to build above 526, I said there was a shot it was going to get to 541, 542. And the reason why I said that, 
that is the daily supply here. And it went to da, 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 543. So my first pivot, uh, I bought it at 526. Uh, my highest sale was like five up 540s. So I was pretty, you know, pretty happy about it. I made back uh, a good amount and then I kind of waited, right? I kind of waited, I kind of waited. And then, and then Tesla remounted. There was a sneaky pivot uh, that Tesla remounted. It was at five. 37. I actually even tweeted this out in my regular account. I said, look, if this thing could, if, and here's a sneaky pivot at 537, right over, where was it? Where was the 537? Oh, it was off the five minutes. Sorry. It was off the five minute that I was watching. And I said, look, if this thing can get above the 537, I think there's a shot it can go at the daily supply and it exploded. I bought it back uh, on that 537 and it went as high as the 543. My highest sale was in the one 542s. So if you told me today with runners and everything, it was going to be north of $10, $11 on Tesla, I thought it would have a monster day today. And da, 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 don't deviate from what you're doing. Don't get cute from what you're doing. Don't overthink. Let your game plan technically tell you that you are wrong. Don't guess. Don't forecast. Be a smarter trader. Again, before you can be a better trader, be a smarter trader. So going into tomorrow, you know, I, I, I kind of... You know, I, I kind of don't have an opinion yet. The the only reason, uh, the only reason I say that is because again we got rejected off uh, this linear regression line. Okay, and last time we got rejected off the linear regression line, we started going lower. So I kind of don't know what I'm feeling yet. Uh, the fact that we're still above the rising five-day moving average on the Qs, I still think we're going to get some value tomorrow to the long side. We're going to get some value tomorrow to the short side. But I think the most important part is, again, have an open mind. Let these channels confirm. I'm probably going to start my day tomorrow after 10 o'clock just to kind of for the market noise uh, to settle down. And I think we should have some value both long, both short. The name of the game, guys, especially for you new traders, Never get frustrated. Your plan, the reason why you have a game plan, the reason why you have an opinion, you want to see the market confirm your thoughts. Okay. Once you start deviating from that opinion uh, before it's necessary, you're going to be playing a 2-7 offsuit, and those are the hardest plays of all. Guys, God bless. Uh, again, most important thing is we were very calm. We were very under control. There was no revenge trading. Got back to the to to the to the Mason Dixon line and lift the fight another day. Guys, God bless and I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.